opinion explains, should we get rid of scrums in rugby? This is a rugby union scrum. This is a rugby league scrum. For those of you that are new to rugby, a scrum is a way to restart play, where the ball is rolled between two packs of opposing players. At first glance, they look exactly the same, but look a little closer. You might notice that there's less players in a rugby league scrum, but that's not what I want you to see. In the rugby union scrum, players are pushing against each other. Anyone can win possession of the ball by pushing the opposing team backwards, or they can try and force a penalty at this point. The advantage obviously belongs to the team with possession of the ball, but in general, both packs of players push against each other for possession. Now, let's take a look at the rugby league scrum, and you'll see that they're not trying to push. In fact, they're doing the complete opposite of trying. Both packs lean on each other, sleep for a few seconds until the ball is played, and then wake up and proceed to retreat backwards. Now you might be thinking, what the hell is going on here? Why are they not even trying to win the ball? The answer lies within both sports rule books, specifically the rules that govern what happens at the scrum. And for all you union snobs who are just going to come out with the same tired remark, Oh, rugby union doesn't have rules, they have laws. <laughs> I'm fully aware of what it's officially called, but in context, they mean exactly the same thing, so f*** you. Where was I? Oh yeah, rule books. So, if you look closely at both rule books that contain the relevant section about feeding the ball into the scrum, there's one salient difference. In rugby union, they stipulate that the ball must go straight into the tunnel. In rugby league, the word straight isn't there. It may seem insignificant, but this has resulted in a rugby union scrum looking like this, and a rugby league scrum looking more like this. Yes, in rugby league, there is no requirement to roll the ball straight into the tunnel, so teams don't. They virtually roll it backwards to their own teammate, and it's legal. The defending team knows this, and rather than be tied up with a scrum and potentially being exposed to a fast break, they'd rather run back and defend. With little chance of winning the ball, because, you know, that, and the fact that it's more important to defend, they don't even try and contest for the ball, so they don't bother pushing. The team with the ball knows this, and if they're going to win the ball anyway, and then know that the other team is going to not push back, they don't need to push either. Hence why a rugby league scrum looks like this, where no one is actually doing anything. That's not to say that they've never tried. On the rarest of occasions, the defending team has caught the attacking team napping and pushed back, usually with good results. Take this one for example. Parramatta has the ball, New Zealand pushes back by surprise, and Sam Tompkins then scores a try out of it. Perfect. But this rarely happens, and in 99.9% .9 of the cases, rugby league scrums are a bit of a snooze fest. Now, you're probably telling yourself, this is completely pointless. And you'd be absolutely correct. The same can't be said about rugby union scrums, because they serve a purpose. The ball is rolled into the tunnel, and players do push for possession of the ball. But they also push for an entirely different reason. Due to the rules of rugby union, it's easy to make a mistake during a scrum that will result in a penalty being given to the other team. So they're also trying to force errors from their opponents that would result in a penalty. The only downside to the scrum in rugby union is that sometimes it can take forever to organize and actually complete a scrum. Due to recent rule changes in world rugby, this process has shortened considerably, but it can be a pain if the scrum keeps breaking down and it's still way longer than a rugby league scrum. Also, union scrums are becoming more like league scrums in the fact that the ball isn't rolled down the middle as the rules dictate. But in general, rugby union scrums serve a real purpose. So the question is, should we get rid of them? In rugby league, absolutely. Most fans hate the scrum, and pundits have been calling for its removal for decades. For goodness sake, just get rid of it. Replace it with either a lineout from Rugby Union, or better still, there's already a rule in Rugby League called the tap restart, where you tap the ball off your foot and away you go. This is by far the easiest and fastest way to restart a game in either code of rugby. 
In Rugby Union, not so much. So long as they enforce that they roll the ball straight down the middle to make it a fairer contest for both teams, I say keep the scrum in Rugby Union because it's an important part of the strategy and tactics of the sport. Games can be won or lost at the scrum, so keeping the scrum in Rugby Union makes perfect sense. If you have enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, share and subscribe, and let me know what you think in the comment section below.